Elian, I have to ask you, uh, there's uh, an interesting origin story, I'm sure, to Mary Jane being in uh, involved with this group. I mean, what's a beautiful, young, rich Chicago woman doing in a place like this, they say, right? <laughs> So uh, the real Mary Jane was living in Paris, um, had spent a lot of the 1930s living in Europe, uh, having a sort of incredible life. She did actually own and could pilot her own plane. That is real. Um, and, you know, was a, a wealthy woman. And um, when the Nazis invaded Paris, a lot of people sort of made their way down to Marseille. It, she had a whole journey getting there. She actually went to Biarritz first. Um, but she she made her way eventually to Marseille. And there are characters that are not in our story um, who were friends of hers who introduced her to Varian Fry and the Emergency Rescue Committee. And she made the decision um, to stay and to fund this operation and to try and help however she could. Um, so there were, as you know, you see on screen in our um, our show, there were people from all around the world who found themselves in Marseille because it was sort of the last free port. She has such a connection with Albert immediately. Is it his good looks? Is it his charm? Is it all of the above? <laughs> I mean, I think for her, it's, you know, checking a few boxes, right? He, um, they have the same mission. They're trying to accomplish the same goals. And I don't know, the looks might not hurt in this instance. Um, you know, it's also, I think, the heightened intensity of the circumstances. In real life, Mary Jane also did have a sort of whirlwind, ill-fated romance, not with Albert. But I think there was um, such heightened intensity there and that heightened romantic feelings as well. So... It's one of those kind of painful love stories where you know it can't last, but you're relishing every moment of it while it's happening. Well, I think at the heart of this is also a love story between many of the characters as well. Would you say that for Varian, maybe uh, a little as well? Uh, a, a little what? I'm sorry. Love story. Oh, a love story? Absolutely, yeah. Romance is, uh, is uh, a major part of this series um you know i think i think what's so nice about what anna has created is a series that takes place during world war ii but it's it's less focused on the the physical violence and uh and terror in that way and more focused on uh what people do to survive um devastation you know the joy the laughter the art the sex like these are all really important things that we have to experience regardless of of what terror is happening around the world it's just uh, there's such anguish on his face when he's the scene where he has just met so many people looking to get out of the country and he's just so limited on who he can help talk about filming that particular scene it must have been one of the toughest for you Corey. Um, it was really difficult, uh, and I, I, for me, it's it's one of the most important uh, parts in the sort of canvas of Varian in this series, and one that I, I really cared very deeply about because it is it's it's a major struggle for Varian, and also between this relationship with Mary Jane Gold and Varian, our, our sort of conflict at the beginning starts because I am. I am very aware that the State Department is limited on the kinds of um, Jewish refugees they will allow into the United States. And so I know, you know, I carry the burden knowing that I cannot help people that don't have a certain stature or prestige. And so he's forced to sit at this table and ask people, are you an artist? Are you an academic or a published author? And he just has to repeat this horrible question to these people who have no idea why that's important. They're suffering just the same. Um, and uh, for me, it, you know, having to ask that over and over and really conceive of what that must feel like to look into the eyes of anyone that is suffering and to say that their suffering doesn't have the same value because they're only a mother or they are only a tailor 
um, it is really, really gut wrenching. Um, and I think it's an important moment for Varian and for the collective emergency rescue committee when things really take a shift and the mission expands or we're headed toward the mission expanding. Well, all of it is so well, so well acted by both of you. Gillian, this is such an interesting moment for you as well, because I find there's a dichotomy to Mary Jane. She has, you know, this Matahari aspect, but also <laughs> she's, <laughs> uh, and I, I say that because, you know, she doesn't seem to flinch too hard when Albert says to her, you know, the, the Spanish police officer has called you a whore and you're like, well, you have to use uh, whatever wiles <laughs> you can uh, to help save as many lives as you can. <laughs> that must have been an interesting aspect for you to draw to this character as well. I think that line is actually based in fact where I think it was in the French police files that they thought that the real Mary Jane Gold, because I think there was a period of time where Varian was sick and she was interviewing refugees and so many men were coming in and out of her room that they they wrote that in her police files. Um, so, it, I mean, this was an incredible character for me for so many reasons that you're talking about, the complexity of her, the arc over the course of this series. Um, for me personally, as an actress, just selfishly, it's the kind of role I've been wanting to play and hoping that someone would give me. So yeah, I was um, presented with this amazing character um, and I just tried to do my best to do it justice. And she did. <laughs> Both of you truly did. Both of you, this is such an important piece, uh, not just for someone who is Jewish as myself, but for so many people to know the history of our country and the thing that people had to do to save others in order to you know, bring them, because we weren't getting involved with the war. Corey, what do you hope lingers with people who watch Transatlantic? Um, you know, uh... Unfortunately, some of the, the issues that we're exploring in the series um, remain current issues, uh, anti-Semitism, which has been on the rise, um, and uh, violence um, attached to that, and also the refugee crisis, not only because of governments and war, but also because of global warming um, and climate change. A lot of people being displaced simply because of environmental issues. You know. We have a lot of crises um, today, and it's only amplified by the by the volume of social media and uh, the democratic sort of communication around the world. So it just it's so loud, all of these issues. But what it comes down to is there are a significant amount of people suffering because of these issues. Um, and I think a couple things I hope people take one to slow down and truly consider um, how difficult it is for some of these people suffering, these refugees or displaced people, um, you know, to consider oneself in that circumstance, what that must feel like, the confusion, the fear, the desperation. And on the other side of that, you know, this story is about regular civilians who truly are not equipped to be doing what they're doing. Uh, but they've taken action. It's something I, you know, I'm not just saying uh, people watching it should learn this. It's something I, I really um, could exercise more in my life. The power that we all have in taking action. Some of us feel helpless or we're not sure what we can do, but these are people that really were not prepared for this moment. However, they had determination to sort of collectively work together to fill in the gaps of each other's deficiencies to create this team where what they accomplished is truly, truly extraordinary. And I think that there's something to learn, learn there.